Hi there and welcome to Shepak. Today we're going to look at this lightweight inverter manual metal arc welder. Now this welder has a welding range of between 10 and 130 amps and as you can see it's really lightweight. So I'm going to open the box, put the contents on the table and you can see exactly what you get. So on the top of the box we have the user manual which is written in several European languages so most useful. So we have a set of leads. So here we have the main earth lead with its plug and its earth clamp. So it does also come with a shoulder carrying strap. That's here. At the bottom of the box here, we have the electrode holder, again with its lead, an appropriate plug. Here we have the little chipping hammer, and it does actually have a wire brush on the back. And this is part of the mask, which we'll show you that assembly later. Again, another part of the mask. A nice protective wrapping. We have the welder itself. So the welder itself does come with a British style 13 amp plug. However, for European use, it does also come with a twin plug as well, with this handy little adapter. Okay, so it can be used in a standard 13 amp British supply. We have the glass for the mask. And finally, we have a little pack with three assorted welding electrodes. And as you can see, that's the contents of the packaging. So let's look at some basic assembly details. So obviously we have the unit here itself with the 13 amp plug, as I mentioned earlier. And this would just plug into a normal domestic 13 amp supply. So the electrode holder, with its standard Euro fitting on the end, would plug into the positive connection. So you just find it into the hole and then rotate it clockwise and you'll see it's firmly locked into position. So your earthing clamp, which you put on your table or on your component to be welded, has exactly the same style plug. Plugs into the negative hole, so just rotate it till it pops in, then turn it clockwise to lock it. So that's the connections for the two cables. To undo them, anti-clockwise and pop them out. Okay, and these are standard Euro connections that most welding sets use. So the next thing we need to do is fit the carrying handle or strap. But as you can see, it's very light. If you were welding up a ladder or having to transport it over a distance, we'd need to fit the carrying strap. So the carrying strap itself, it's like a lanyard type. So we'll fit this strap on and I'll show you how easy it is to fit over the shoulder. So to fit the lanyard, you'll see that it comes with a loop and a tail. So I'll just undo it. Just stretch it out into one long length. Okay? So make sure I keep it flat. Now you'll see on the back, there's a slot. And on the front, there's a slot. In fact, there are two slots. The upper slot is probably the best one to use. And I can feed it through, keeping the material flat. And as you can see, I've got two ends. I'll try not to twist them. Make sure I'm not twisted. That way round. Feed it back up through the buckle. Back down through the buckle. Okay. I can adjust it to what looks like a suitable length for myself. That's going to be way too long. I'm only a short chap. Okay. I can just feed the tail end back through there to neaten things up. Back through there to neaten things up. So I have another piece of dangling cord. And there we are, as you can see. Sits nicely on the hip. That's about the right length for me. I could actually put it over my head to keep it even more secure. So if I was walking around or travelling any distances, as you can see, it's a really portable unit. So I've got a welding rod here. This happens to be a 3.2 mil. Simple squeeze action on the trigger. And I can simply fit the rod in there. Make sure it's neatly clamped, get it into the groove, oh there we are, that's better, into the groove, and of course, very simple to change rods very quickly. So the welding mask that's supplied is pretty much there just to get you started. So let's look at its assembly. So you'll see the two poppers here and two holes. Bring the poppers to the inside, and as you can see, they simply pop together there. I'll do exactly the same on the other side. Poppers on the inside going to the outside, and that gives the outside shape of the mask. The handle coming in from below the bottom of the mask, two slots, push it up into the grooves, and 
click it into place. Not quite, I haven't quite got it. There we go, firm click into place. And the third component is the welding screen glass itself. So if I lift these two little tabs up just a little, I can slide the glass in underneath all the way in. And there we are, that's the glass in position and that's the mask ready to use. So we've talked about the assembly details, now let's look at the controls and the lights. So two lights, one here, one here. The upper light is the power light, so when the power is on and the plug is in, this light will be on. I'll just rotate the unit, and you can see at the back here, we have the on-off switch. That would be off, that would be on. When you plug in the mains, it lights up, and when you flick it to the on position, the power light would turn on here. If at any point the power light goes out, and this or this light comes on, this would be the over temperature light. So that basically means that you've been using the welder too much, it has got hot, it's self-protecting and cooling itself down. Once it's cooled down enough, this light will go out and you can start using the welder again. So we have the adjustment here for the amperage range, and as you can see, it goes from 10 amps to 130 amps. You simply turn it clockwise up to maximum, anti-clockwise down to minimum, and anywhere in between. So I was personally given one of these machines for testing, and that's why I'm quite excited about it. What I found, or have found with previous inverter welders, is that the over temperature light comes on fairly regular, which means that they have a quite a low duty cycle. Now there is a duty cycle written on the side of this machine, and you'll see all the specifications written on the side here. So, personal experience, I've found that 13 amp fuses blow in the plug if you run these welders on maximum. I have had this machine plugged in and run it on maximum and welded with it with no issues with fuses blowing whatsoever. So it truly does run on a 13 amp power supply. So that said, I thought let's see how long I can weld before the over temperature light comes on. So again, I run it on maximum amps, 130, using 3.2 millimeter rods. I got through 30 of them uh, until basically I'd had enough welding and at no time during me using those 30 rods welding and this was continuous one rep rod after another and at no time did it actually over temperature. I was using it outside in a fairly cool environment but uh, I think that's a fair test that it will do exactly what it says on the tin and weld with 3.2 millimeter rods at 130 amps running purely on the 13 amp fuse. So as far as I'm concerned I'm more than happy with it. Well, I do hope you found this demonstration useful. So I really do like my Shepak welder and I really do hope you enjoy it when you buy yours. I've been Adrian and thank you for watching.